even the venting of the units is different. It's not the standard uh, 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 toilet vent all the way to the roof. So, uh, and the technology in the units will be very high, uh, very high speed um, fiber uh, speed. But you know, those those are the things we're trying to put into the building. As keep saying, taking a risk that all this will will work and look great. And so far, uh, from the historical review, which is another thing we had to go through, uh, it works with the other buildings and yet looks contemporary. So can, can we go back to the management question for a second? Yeah. So it, would there be any consideration of local hiring or using a local business to manage it? If, so they, if they were, if they had a, a good, um, you know, a good ability to do it, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a tough job, as you know, to manage. You want to call and focus all item. Okay. Uh, well, all these people have already asked questions, so you can pick. Oh, go ahead. I was just trying to get people to have. Okay. Well, one of the things you talked about basically was all the fees you have to pay into planning department and things like that. But from what I understand, this design that you have set up is like normal uh, private developers will have to pay community benefits to the city to fund other things that, that the city or the community needs. But you're going to be exempt from having to do that. And so, how is that going to oh, your, your risk and your we're, we're not We're not exempt. Uh, the city uh, has zoning districts like Rincon Hill or Eastern Selma or Market Octavia um, that have a series of different fees for those areas. This area doesn't have those fees. So uh, it's not that we're not doing it, we're doing what's required. It's just that we're not. How about one young expert? I need to show okay, up. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Jarrell had his hand up. I want to pick on people who haven't. Oh, no. Um, and I'm sorry I'm late. I'm, I'm just curious about open space. What was, you know, the parking, and we only have one park that's for an adult in the neighborhood. So I understand people can go other places, and that's what you're probably holding. Uh, you got a lot of other parts of the city. And, uh, maybe shovel them in, shovel them out, I don't know. But uh, open space, what do you mean by that? Uh, I mentioned the roof decks. Okay. Uh, is the major open space open to the sky. There are small setbacks, as you can see uh, in the plans. We have courtyards, open courtyards in both projects, which you can see in the plans. So can people barbecue and stuff up here? I'm just curious. Yeah. And how would you be able to control uh, no burn days? No, no burn days. No burn days. days. How, how, how would you keep that under control? Spare the air. Spare the air days. Yeah, spare the air Yeah, you wouldn't barbecue on those days, and that's another management. How would you keep that? How management has to control that. I mean, you have to obey the laws. But that's what management's job is. We'll keep you to that if it's built. Fine. Okay. Sure, great. What, what are you giving back to the community? Because from what I hear is you're just coming in here, blocking this down, and having all these people come in, but there's no benefits given back to the community. Uh, and to be a good neighbor, you need to work with and to give back to the community. Don't have jobs. Well, I mean, um, obviously there will be jobs in the in the project. There will be retail, new retail space. I think you have to put it against what you got now as community. No, but what are you as a company? I understand, but what do you have now as a community benefit is a surface parking lot. Okay, what we are doing to improve that, and it may not be the set of community benefits you want, but is to have two new retail spaces, to have 238 new units. Um, and to have people live in them, where right now nobody lives there. That, to me, is a community benefit. Now, you may argue that that's not enough, or we, there should be uh, public art, or there should be community space, or there should be 50% uh, below cost housing. That's not what we're proposing. And, and uh, you may disagree with that. But that's what we need to get this, this project done. Okay, we have done. a question up here. Sure. Yeah. Good question. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Number one, so the first question is, um, dealing with, uh, since you say it's your prototype, nationally and internationally, is this, this type of modular construction, are there other uh, entities that have done it besides you? There are probably two dozen um, attempts right now. Um, the... Um, Harriet Street that Patrick Kennedy did uh, is the most recent one. 
that was a, a system of lifting a whole, um, call it a cargo bay, and putting it on top of each other um, and enclosing it. Uh, there are, if you read the uh, Business Times, uh, there are proposals in Oakland, I believe in Hayward and Fremont for modular housing. So it's been the holy grail of building for a long time, but actually executing <coughs> has been very difficult. Okay, then my next question is, will these individual units be condoized? Uh, there's a difference between condo and mapping it. So I think we will map it. Map it as condos. As and condos. And, and let me explain. They are going to be rental. Right. But San Francisco does not allow you to map a project once it's occupied. That would be considered conversion. And as you know, conversion is now down to three or less units. Uh, so you really can't convert anything existing now back to condos. There, there are a few TICs going through right now. So every Every development, I can promise you, and maybe even TNDC does it in your projects, every market rate project maps their units, just in case something changes in the future. Well, I understand that, but I also, okay, I'm guessing that's a new concept. concept. Yeah, the next question. Then the next question is, um, since, since uh, uh, how would this, uh, you're not the first developer for that site. So you, you're, you're saying that you're, you're, you know, you're, you're taking risks, well, every developer takes those risks from where you are at right now, okay? Uh, the prior one that was trying to do it, he went bankrupt. So, so to say that, that you're, not, you're not the first one to try to develop that site, okay? Uh, and and, and, to, and to, um, to say that, um, you know, to work with, you know, everything you've said so far, everybody else has to do the same thing because you made a point of in the risk and taking the risk of developing the site because we, we don't know it's a community. Say, you have enough funds to build your property, to, to, to build it. And so you might turn around and sell your, your, your permits to somebody else to do it. You know what I'm saying? After you get the approval. Yeah, the if we get the approval, because this is some developers do that. They, they, they'll just go through the, through the procedures and then, and then, and then sell, sell the rights to somebody else to develop it because for whatever reason, for whatever something will happen, you know. Okay, okay, that's not a question. Okay, so, uh, well, then, so the, the question is, do you have the money? That's the question. Okay. <laughs> they think we have the money. You, do you have the millions of dollars it's going to cost to build this? How much, how much do you project the cost of this, these two without, buildings? Without getting into our budgets and our pro forma, we have enough to build the project. As, as you say, people can go bankrupt. Right. and have on this site. What I said is that it hasn't been developed for at least 60 or 70 years. Right. I didn't say there were more okay. prior attempts. Well, what would you say is the proposed budget for development to, to finalize approximately yeah, the I don't two wanna, sites? I don't want to throw out a number. You don't? Because the price might go up? Is that what you're saying? Because you know, things are blocks. I don't want to throw it. It's my choice as to what I want to say to everybody. I don't want to say what the okay, okay, there is. Okay, move on. You answered your question. So now there's other people, and we're going to be shutting off, shutting down our questions in a minute because we have we stick to our agenda. But we'll go to ask the speaker to stay. But we have to go move on to um, announcements. Okay, sure, I'm happy to stay as long. Yeah, well, because we'll, we'll go back to an, yeah. you after we deal announcements because we have an agenda. This okay. is this is not necessarily a question as much as a statement. Um, I've been in the tenement since 1976, and I've seen movements, and I've seen regressions. Um, what happens when people build these small units? They're very small. This is, a, this is more like a little box, a little larger coffin-sized um, living quarters. Um, but they're paying a large amount. They're going to get unsatisfied living like that over a period of time and go and look to other places. Now, a lot of nonprofits have tied up some properties, but not a significant number in my opinion. They're going to start looking at other SRO hotels that have cheaper rents, but larger spaces, like the Cadillac. Not that I'm ever going to rent, because I'm really not. But I'm, I'm just saying that um, my rooms are going to be much more attractive to someone who might want to save a buck. Um, it's, going to, it's like a tossing a pebble into a pond where there's a ripple effect on the entire community. And we all need to be aware that there is going to be a big ripple effect, and it's going to affect us directly. Maybe not initially, but down the line it will. What we need to do is we need to get our district zoned for community benefits so that we can ask for mitigation funds. 
issue. And that's, this is, like I'm saying it to the group, not necessarily to you. We need to make sure this happens so that we can protect some of our housing for people who have very few alternatives. Okay, so what we're going to do now, because, thank you, Kathy. So what we're going to do, because we have an agenda, we're going to ask you to come back after announcements. So we want to do what's on the agenda, which is announcements. So there is a list already on the agenda of uh, community updates. And then now we're going, uh, before you leave, Jerome, you have a community update? Oh, um, no. No, 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 okay. <laughs> Put you on the spot. All right. Uh, uh, Amos, community updates. Come up front, Jerome. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Gregory, and uh, I've been doing a lot of work in the community for about five years now. And uh, I created a uh, mural project uh, between Taylor and Jones here in O'Farrell. Can you speak up, please? I created the mural project between Taylor and Jones here in O'Farrell. It's called Veterans Alley. Uh, Vets Alley. Uh, I think a lot of folks are familiar with it. And, uh, just wanted to come down and give everyone an update on uh, a few things that we've been doing in the alley and uh, our progress. So that's Alley is a mural project I created, right? I, I created this with this homeless veteran uh, in the Tenderloin uh, to give voices, voices, population, and community. Uh, the project over the last few years has covered um, six buildings, 30,000 square feet. All the murals are done by U.S. military veterans. Um, and uh, last year, well, actually two years ago, almost two years ago, we, we had a very, very interesting like free space um, right across the street on O'Farrell, uh, like four, I think it was like 460 O'Farrell. We have a huge space. We had we created a Zen garden. Um, the project was created by me and fellow community members, and it's always been grassroots. We're all disabled. We used our own money to create this project. And uh, we were displaced because our building was purchased and uh, we were kicked out. So we spent the last, what, year and a half, almost two years, pretty much hiding our paints behind public urinals, um, hiding our paints uh, in SROs. And, um, and through that, um, we, we've really kept the project growing and it's grown. Um, it's expanded off to other cities and also um, we started working with folks in uh, the United Kingdom. Um, okay, because you just get to stick to uh, I'm time getting there. or whatever, because we have other announcements. I'm getting there. Okay. We're getting there. And so um, what we've done is last year when we, we approached um, our supervisor, they looked us up with uh, the TNC to look for a, uh, a space for us, a safe space, because a lot of folks that we have that take the out are homeless, and, um, and we've never had a safe space to actually create this art. And so we engaged TNDC about eight, nine months ago, and we've encountered a few roadblocks um, on getting uh, the space uh, for us, which is at 476 Eddy. Um, and uh, I just want to inform uh, the community that we've worked with the supervisor, and it seems like I think in the next two months we'll finally have the space for our, um, for our project. And so that's been a, like quite a bit of a journey for us because we almost lost everything we had started a couple years ago because we were evicted. Um, and we survived. And um, finally, hopefully this summer, we'll have the space to actually continue on our work. And okay, where's the location? The location is at 476 Eddy. And then something else that uh, I wanted to make the community aware of was uh, what we're calling the, some a group of people called the Winton 13. It's the uh, Winton Hotel, and like I mentioned, uh, the, the core of our project is rooted in the SROs and, on, and within the, in the house population in the Tenderloin. And so we've gotten to know this community of people that live in this SRO um, on O'Farrell Street quite well. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, uh, it was a major lawsuit against uh, that SRO last year. Uh, the district attorney brought a lawsuit against the property owners. Uh, because of the living conditions which we have witnessed as people living in for three years. Um, the property owners then sold the property. Um, most of the, in, uh, the residents of the Winton are disabled. Uh, many of the case workers moved them off-site. Uh, many of the folks went to the Empress Hotel. Uh, and then 13 were left. They're all disabled. Um, three of them identify as veterans. And they've all been given their eviction notices. The average um, income 
um, is below $1,000. Uh, the average residency rate of the Winton 13 uh, is minimum five years, I think maximum 15 years. And the average rent of these uh, residents is $500. And so in talking with these community members recently, uh, we decided to, number one, we're going to paint a mural in Veterans Alley, uh, which is a high visibility spot. Uh, brings in people from all over the world to see what we're saying, uh, to raise awareness around them. Um, and we're also going to try to work with um, the city, to, to, uh, the district supervisor, Ms. Kim, to, um, to bring um, people's stories uh, up to them. Because a lot of these folks are involved deeply with Veterans Alley. And Veterans Alley is now a landmark in the Tenderloin. And, um, and it's so unfortunate that I'm talking to many of these people and the stories of you know what they're planning on doing, you know, moving down to LA. Okay, do, do you have any announcements? Because you try to keep it short, okay. and you're kind of taking a lot of time. We so, to so that. the Winton 13. Um, okay, no, no, just say time, place, location, and what. If there's an event that you want to talk about, please. Talk. So, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to organize. Um, uh, some advocacy around the Winton 13. Okay, so and okay, so just leave it like that. Okay, because we have other. Do you have any other event? Or uh, we, have no other, have we have no other updates from the. Event. Okay, that's fine. We have to move on to the next person. Um, Jarrell. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, tell you about a project that was in the works, and we were um, going around to different community. Um, Groups and um, we were going to do a Tenderloin Pride in the Park 2015. Uh, most of you know me as Gerald Banks, but um, a lot of people know me as Asha Lundi. And um, the way that got started was to make sure that the uh, Board of Park remains open to everyone. And so after the Vicky Marlene event, uh, Sri Adlon and the one in Block Turk, we were going to phase into doing something in Tenderloin Pride in the Park. But too many heads were butted um, with the event. And, um, and we started a walking tour. We had a problem with the guy that works on the weekend, um, works in the park. He has um, some LGBT issues. Um, but I think that since he works for the city, he's still there. But um, I just wanted to tell everyone, we are still working on it. I'm trying to find another group to do it under. Um, and um, I was talking with the Boys and Girls Club. I was supposed to email um, a lady over there. Um, but I'm going to keep my options open because when you get, a, when you get uh, involved in stuff, sometimes um, things don't work out the way it's supposed to be. And before I would be a part of something that's going to be sloppy, i will just rather cancel it um, if my name has to be on it. So I'll bring you more things later in the year. After. All right, thank um, you, girl. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anybody else that's short and sweet? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexander Goldman, community planner with Tim. Yeah, sure. Way, sure. We'll get on camera. Yeah. It just oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Community planner with TNDC. Um, it's a pretty new position for TNDC, and with all of the changes happening in the Tenderloin, we're trying to get residents together to organize and think about some of the changes um, and sort of imagine what we would like to see, especially what sort of concessions from developers we'd like to see. So we're having uh, monthly meetings on, two, on the fourth Tuesday of the month at the Alexander Residence, which is just right up the street. That's 230 Eddy Street. Um, I have some flyers and um, definitely if people are interested in the issues we were discussing today with this group housing project, this would be a great, yeah. This would be a great place to come and talk more about that. So, would this be limited to TNDC residents, or would this be general residents? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. It would be limited to residents who live in the Soma and Tenderloin, but they can live any anyone who lives, you know, in any building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank well. you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll do a real quick one. Um, there's going to be at Bodecker Park on Senior Wendor, Senior. Uh, Betty Trainer, uh, friends of Bodecker Park. Uh, there's going to be an uh, open house uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday, June 3rd. It's going to be in the later afternoon, 4 to 5.30. And uh, this might actually be a time uh, that you could talk about at least there's going to be a lot of people there and people from the Boys and Girls Club, I believe they're hosting it. 
and uh, maybe the pride in the park could at least be talked about at that.